Hello there, everyone. In this module, we'll be learning about pediculosis. Let's start by talking about the types. There are several types of pediculosis, each associated with specific types of lice. Pediculosis humanus var capitis, commonly known as the head louse, this type infests the scalp and hair of humans. Pediculosis humanus var corporis, Referred to as the body louse, this species is found on clothing and bedding. Therus pubis. Known as the pubic louse, this type primarily infests coarse body hair, such as in the genital area. Let's take a closer look at the different types, starting with Pediculosis humanus var capitis. It is commonly known as the head louse and possesses distinct anatomical features. Its body structure is dorsoventrally flattened. Its head is marked by a pair of five segmented antennae. Its thorax consists of three pairs of legs, each terminating in claws. Its abdomen comprises of nine segments. As for its reproductive behavior, it lays 100 eggs per day. Let's go over the life cycle of the head louse. In the life cycle of Pediculosis humanus var capitis, the eggs, also called nits, take approximately 7 to 10 days to hatch. After hatching, the louse progresses through the nymph stages. During this phase, it undergoes three molts over a period of two to four weeks. Now for the adults. In the adult stage of the head louse, this condition is more commonly found in females than in males. Overcrowded living conditions and poor hygiene are identified as predisposing factors for the occurrence of head lice. Clinical features of head louse infestation include itching, oozing, crusting, eczematization, and regional lymphadenopathy. It's important to note Adults are often the source of active infection, and nits, which are oval, glistening, translucent lidded capsules, should be differentiated from dandruff to accurately diagnose and manage the condition. Now let's talk about Pediculosis humanus var corporis. It is also known as the body louse and is characterized by these features. For its size and appearance, it's larger than the head louse, measuring up to 3.8 millimeters. It exhibits a grayish color and noticeable segments in the antennae. For its reproductive behavior, the body louse can lay up to 300 eggs per day. For the mode of transmission, the infection commonly spreads through sharing of clothing and beddings of an infected person. In cases of body louse infestation, clinical features include the following. Erythematous macules, urticarial wheels, excoriated papules, and linear scratch marks. Chronic cases may manifest a condition known as vagabond's disease. It's particularly observed in individuals with long standing infections and characteristically shows thickened and darkened skin due to constant rubbing, and in some instances, it may lead to post inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Now let's talk about the diagnosis. Unlike head and pubic lice, body lice infection is usually diagnosed by finding eggs and lice in the seams of clothing rather than on the skin. Hence, it requires careful examination of individual clothing. The primary approach to treatment involves disinfection of all clothes and beddings. Now we'll talk about thyrus pubis. It's commonly known as the pubic louse and is characterized by the following. For its physical attributes, it has a broad and short gray body and is distinguished by long red legs measuring 1.5 to 2.0 millimeters. As for its reproductive behavior, the eggs are affixed to body hair, hatching within a week and reaching adulthood in two to three weeks. Risk factors associated with pubic lice include sexual promiscuity and poor hygiene, association with sexually transmitted diseases such as syphilis and gonorrhea, and in the case of children, the presence of pubic lice may indicate sexual abuse or infected parental contact. 
Clinical features of thyrus pubis include the following. Itching of the pubic regions. Infestation may extend to hairs on the abdomen, thighs, axillae, eyebrows, and even eyelashes on the skin. Blue or slate-colored macules, known as maculae cerulei, may appear on the sides of the trunk and inner aspects of the thighs due to altered blood pigments. For diagnosis, confirmation is achieved through demonstration of pubic lice from the body. Clinical features of pediculosis encompass itching, presence of nits and live lice upon examination, and lymph node enlargement. Differential diagnoses of pediculosis include pityriasis capitis or dandruff, particularly for pediculosis capitis, seborrheic dermatitis, folliculitis, scabies, hairspray remnants, piedra or superficial fungal infection of the hair shaft, scalp impetigo, insect bites, eczema, and scalp psoriasis. Another diagnosis are pseudonits, also known as hair casts. They're 2 to 7 millimeter long, discrete, firm, shiny, white, and freely movable tubular accretions that present around the hair shafts. One last diagnosis is manilothrix. This is a hereditary condition considered to be an autosomal dominant disorder where the hair shaft shows a beaded appearance under a light microscope. Thank you for listening to this module about pediculosis.